Well, good morning, everyone. Yes, good morning indeed, Sonia. I'm Matt Kenny, and here's some Canadian news. I know it can be hard to understand what the politicians are really saying, so I'm here to translate it for you. Our government was elected on a commitment to investigate the existence of well-funded foreign special interest groups that had been waging a decade-long campaign to landlock Alberta's oil and gas resources. I'm pleased to report that we have officially fulfilled that commitment. See, here she's saying we didn't fulfill our commitment. But please don't look past my fake smile and actually read the report. Also, don't look into what we really promised when we started this hysteria. I'd like to, th to thank Commissioner Steve Allen for the hard work and due diligence that went into the inquiry and for submitting a comprehensive final report. <laughs> we paid him a f ton of your tax dollars. That report, along with the Deloitte report, is now available on the Government of Alberta website. Oh, also, check out this other private report with redacted information you didn't know or agree to pay for. Don't look too much into where it comes from, or the motivations behind it, or the redacted information about the pro-oil and gas groups that receive even more foreign funding. Just take our word for it. It owns the libs. Those reports together provide extensive evidence of sophisticated and well-financed campaigns, such as the tar sands campaign, that specifically targeted the development of our resources. Some charities don't like how little regulation the oil and gas monopoly has in our energy industry, and that makes us has us sad. There have been many suspicions and theories about those campaigns over the years. We read a lot of YouTube comments from our favorite puppet shows. During my 13 years experience working in the energy sector, I personally saw the evidence of these campaigns. My experience and friendships in the oil and gas industry is definitely not a conflict of interest. As they targeted pipelines, like Northern Gateway Pipeline, Line 9, Energy East, KXL, and Trans Mountain. I could see the antics and tactics of these campaigns on the ground. I have personal anecdotal stories about my work friends being bullied. I could see these campaigns as they stacked regulatory proceedings, organized grassroots activities, litigated when things didn't go their way. It's not fair when they used the law to successfully jump through hoops. Targeted policymakers, discredited regulators, and even chained themselves to infrastructure. Stupid hippies, get a job! What the public inquiry report does is to document with a significant level of detail who was involved and what their motives were. We googled real hard for some stuff. The organizations involved in these campaigns celebrated their successes as each pipeline project was delayed or canceled. How dare those people celebrate succeeding at their goals! While they boasted, Albertans were hurt. How dare they try to hold fossil fuel companies accountable for years of climate inaction! People lost their jobs, businesses went under, families were hurt, government revenues from royalties were impacted. We lost billions of dollars in royalties. And we had to give away a ton of your tax dollars to make up the difference! We saw pipeline bottlenecks and that led to heavy discounts and led to curtailment. While other jurisdictions were able to build infrastructure, we have been deliberately blocked. Albertas have a right to be upset. We're sad Alberta oil and gas got picked on the hardest for refusing to listen to anyone. And while there is justification to be, be upset, I truly believe that sun, sunlight is sometimes the best disinfectant. Sunlight's a simple analogy. Let's use that. We use it to fight vampires, so it must work on evil charities. And this report does exactly that. It shines a blinding light on the broader movement and the vast amount of foreign funding that is crossing the Canadian border, often untraced. This metaphor is great, because I don't actually have to say any of the numbers and can exaggerate to cause hysteria. These organizations operated like a business. 
They're so sneaky, they operate like businesses. And we know businesses can't be trusted. The commissioner called it an industry unto itself. They applied for and received funding and grants from multi-billion dollar foreign foundations. They jumped through legal hoops designed by the charity system. Some of those hoops included money from many different countries. That foreign funding was used to not only target pipelines and projects, but to influence domestic public policy, legislation, and regulatory processes. That should concern all Canadians. We are not talking about small money here. The amounts involved are profoundly large. From 2010 to 2018, approximately $15 billion of foreign funding directed towards Canadian charities came across the border. Foreign funding of Canadian-based environmental initiatives was at $1.28 billion between 2003 and 2019. Here's a bunch of numbers and dates. Please don't ask for specifics, though. Many of these organizations operate as an industry, adapting to emerging markets and trends, and jumping from cause to cause. These sketchy mother operate like a business, and we all know businesses can't be trusted. And that money comes across the border with a lack of transparency and disclosure. Especially foreign businesses! The funds are hard to find and difficult to trace. It's like tossing a penny into a muddy pond and trying to find it. The deeper it sinks, the more murky it gets and the harder it is to find. I think she dumbed this down quite enough. That's why the commissioner's number one recommendation is for better transparency and governance. We need to look for foreign funding influence in all of our businesses. For over a decade, these campaigns targeted our energy sector. I'm just going to casually call the oil and gas monopoly that has held our province hostage for decades the energy sector. And it waged, waged on from protests to blockades, to lawsuits and celebrity arrests, and even dangling from the Iron Workers Memorial Bridge. That's not fair. We want celebrities too. All our celebrities are just billionaires. The goal was always to landlock Alberta's oil and gas. That was the ultimate goal of the Tar Sands campaign. This one group really hurt our feelings. We saw it play out step by step, and it continues today. Divestment campaigns operating today have claimed to achieve over 1,000 divestments from fossil fuels, representing $8 trillion. By the way, don't learn about market volatility or how the stock market actually works. Recently, we saw President Joe Biden continue his pleas for more OPEC oil in order to re rescue the United States from high fuel prices. My lord, Gondor calls for aid! If only Canada could have provided Americans with a stable source of energy from a trusted friend, friend and ally that adheres to the highest ESG standards. But we don't have enough friendly oil pipelines to help! If only we could have avoided this energy crisis. The energy crisis is way more important than that lame climate crisis. To be clear, Americans are looking for someone to blame for today's skyrocketing energy prices. Americans are pissed at you for not forcing pipelines on them. I know a few organizations named in this report that they could thank for that. Here's a list of charities for right-wing extremist groups to go ahead and attack and harass because hysteria! Imagine if the Northern Gateway Pipeline had not been vetoed in 2016. It would have been delivering 525,000 barrels a day of oil to overseas markets. Here's a hypothetical that you don't understand. That sounds like a big consequence. Markets that are experiencing an energy crisis and are stockpiling crude that we can't deliver because infrastructure was blocked. But don't ask about our current pipeline capacities. The world is in an energy crisis with a shortage of supply of oil and natural gas. The energy crisis is way more important than that lame climate crisis. Alberta could have helped. Let me repeat that. I think you're stupid and didn't understand it the first time I said it, so I'm going to say it again. Alberta could have helped. 
but we have been blocked because of these campaigns. Instead, other oil pr producing jurisdictions like Saudi Arabia and Russia That's instructive. have been given a strategic advantage. They are able to ramp up production and use that wealth to fund their energy future, whether that is hydrogen, renewables, or clean natural gas. Isn't it great what you can accomplish with very little human rights? Wouldn't it be great if we were more fascist? It is a transfer of wealth with zero impact on reducing global GHG emissions. It doesn't make sense. These fascists are so rich, we should be jealous. And it clearly doesn't achieve the outcomes those ca campaigns claim to stand for, such as reducing emissions and protecting the environment. How dare these campaigns take action in countries they have enough influence to actually affect change! But we can't change the past. We can't change how we got here today. But we sure like to bring it up when it's not about us! But we can learn from the observations of this inquiry. We have to focus on the future. We have to learn from the very well-executed strategies that these campaigns employ employed so effectively. We have to copy and paste their marketing campaigns. We have to learn from that so we can protect the energy resources of the future. I'm so glad we paid $3.5 million for the CEC to get an in-depth report on their competition. Now knowing how these campaigns operate, we can predict that these kinds of campaigns are coming after the next thing, whether that's hydrogen, carbon capture utilization and storage, critical and rare earth minerals, small modular reactors, or LNG. It's money looking for a cause. Here's some more hysteria for you. We're not doing these things. We could be, but we're afraid they'll make fun of us for it. So we're sticking with oil and gas. We need to ensure that we do not frustrate or delay the development of energy resources of the future. The things that are needed here in Alberta to reduce emissions and set Alberta up to diversify and be competitive in a world that is moving to lower carbon emissions. But don't ask us how we're doing any of this. Our government remains committed to the best interests of Albertans and protecting and supporting the Alberta, Alberta's energy sector. But mostly my friends in oil and gas. I'm pleased to say that we accept the Commissioner's recommendations and, all, and already are acting on many of them. We have no idea what the f*** he was talking about, but we're going to do some stuff we were already going to do anyways that contradicts what the report recommends, so it makes it seem like we're doing stuff. This includes demonstrating national leadership in emerging low-carbon resources development, enabling Indigenous participation in responsible energy development through the Alberta Indigenous Opportunities Corporation and things like the Site Rehabilitation Program. We're working with a diverse group of people through this pigeonhole process that filters out anti-Albertans. And earlier this year, we established an ESG secretariat, which is set to help capital, to attract capital to Alberta by sharing a positive, unified and compelling narrative that showcases Alberta's ESG performance and ambitions. We gave more jobs to our friends to yell at people about how friendly we are. The bottom line is that Alberta's natural resources belong to Albertans and decisions about their development should be made by people of this province. And we are committed to ensuring that that occurs. Alberta belongs to Albertans. Please don't look into the actual Indigenous ownership of the land, though. At this time, I'd be happy to take questions. Kenny set me up here for this sh kicking, and I'm ready.